little grasshopper airplane cannot fly there. Welcome to another episode of Beers with Peers. I'm your host, Yo Sandia. Today I'm joined with the one and only Jamel, aka J1. What's going on, man? How we doing? I'm I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? I'm excited, a little nervous. <laughs> Me too. It's my second episode, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> well, this episode is gonna be a classic. Do you drink beer at all? I do drink a little beer here and there. When I say here and there, I really mean like here and there. Very seldom, so it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> so the whole point of the show, of course, is it's three random beers. Each beer is a different question, and we don't know what the beers are. We'll basically get revealed afterwards. If we don't like it, we still drink it, so okay. we're kind of stuck with it. So let's get to it. All right, let's do this. All right, cheers. Cheers. That's pretty good. That's really good. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew the first one was gonna be I consider it tastes like grapes. That's what I always say, grapes. When I don't know the hops or whatever. <laughs> when I drink beers like this, I it to me it has like a grape taste, like it's fermented grapes. It's really smooth. It's a it's it's a lager. It's but definitely it is smooth. a lager. It's smooth, it's light. Oh, that's good. I mean, All it's right. so good. I almost was going to chug the whole thing right now. I, it's funny because I thought about the exact same no, thing, like, but I'm like, no, 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 no. I should wait. I should wait. I should ease into it. All righty. So, J1, ah, you good. are a radio show host. Yeah. So, um, how I met you was through a friend and actually met you at the radio show studio that you actually work at. Yeah. Um, how did you get into that and how are you doing in it, basically? Oh, man. Uh, funny story. So, um... I had been working at Stand Up Live for a long time, and um, a buddy of mine named Mike, Mike Plant, came up with an idea yeah. to uh, start having shows at the club, because, you know, they only had shows on Wednesdays, Thursday, or Wednesdays, like Fridays, Saturday, Sunday. They had all these other days of the week where they didn't have anything going on. So we pitched an idea, like, hey, if we can fill the building, can we put on a show? And uh, they were like, yeah. So we came up with a show called Dapper Downtown. Um, and basically, it was like a variety show. Uh, it was spoken word poetry, uh, hip hop, uh, some comedians, and we had a house band. And um, I just happened to have a lot of friends that were in the local scene when it came to hip hop. And then, of course, working at Stand Up Live, we got to meet every local comedian that there is. So um, it kind of made it easy. And the first couple shows sold out. And then it came to like, hey, we want sponsors. So we started reaching out for different people for sponsors as far as alcohol, um, promo girls, and uh, banners and red carpet. I happened to reach out to a company called Trinity Promotions to look for a red carpet for like, you know, a red carpet runway. Yeah. Um, they hooked me up with the carpet. Uh, they actually even came to the show and I uh, started talking with the owner of the, sh of the you know, the promotion company. And uh, she said they had a radio station. And, uh, oh, shit. Told me a little bit about it and I just jokingly was like, you should let me do a radio show there. And uh, she said, okay. And like I, straight up, like just like, like all right, let's do up, it. Like, yeah, okay, cool. Here's my contact. Like, like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, a hip hop show. You know, she was, we have a show like, you know, that does hip hop on the station, but you know, give me a call and we'll, we'll figure something out. And I was like, cool. Never, never even thought about it again. Um, the rest of that night, that week for that even, but something that I always wanted to do was get into radio as a kid. Yeah. I had a friend who was a bar owner who always told me I had the perfect voice for radio. You you really do have a great voice you for know, radio. I didn't know how to take that though. I was like, am I ugly? Are you telling me <laughs> I can't be on you TV? You can't be on the camera. So Your voice can be, be on yeah, You can be heard, but not seen. So, so no. Um, so she ended up calling me like a week later. I was like, hey, are you going to come down to the station? Are you going to meet everybody? Are you going to talk about your idea? In the back of my mind, I was like, fuck, man. I was just talking shit. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, yeah, sure. You know what What day works? And um, she gave me a day. I hit up one of my buddies who did uh, music. And I was like, hey, you want to do a radio show with me? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I got an opportunity to do a radio <laughs> show, man. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Talked like... my way into it. And um, <laughs> always been into like everything local. So I went down. I was like, you know, I want to spotlight local artists. Uh, that, you know, are just getting started, maybe not too well known. And I want to focus on like local business. And I always want to have a dope ass fucking freestyle at the end of every show. 
And she's like, all right, cool, run it. And uh, thanks to my buddy, Mike Myers and uh, Dave Miranda, uh, they made it so easy to start contacting and connecting with so many different artists that everybody just started coming on the show and it started to snowball. And um, the staple of the show ended up being that freestyle that the guests would come on, but they didn't know it was coming. Yeah. They'd get through their whole interview. And they were like, play their music. And then I was like, hey, you know what? Before we get you out of here, <laughs> you cannot leave unless you spit a freestyle for me right now. And you know, they'd be like, oh, yeah. oh okay. And then we throw on a beat and it just kind of turned into competition throughout the valley. People be like, yo, I want to go on that show and drop some fucking bars. And it just caught wildfire, man. And just started making a lot of relationships within the hip hop community. And the rest is, is history. I yeah, I've actually been at the sh the radio like station while you uh -huh. were actually filming and you guys were just going in and like, you it was it was great too. Cause you guys were just, the, the, the content was yeah. there and I think it was such a well-rounded actual radio like talk show yeah. that I think like I'm like this yeah, is really good. You. I was like this is really good. I was just we were just waiting in the lobby. I think we had a meeting with you actually. Yeah, it was that first meeting. I felt bad because we're yeah, it was like we were show. there like, and it was like waiting, we're like we're there for like an up. hour. And we're like, do we just keep chilling? But I, I was I was I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it because it was it was cool to get to like be behind the scenes uh -huh. of like this like basically this thing being created. No. And I think that was dope. I was like, this is dope as shit. I think that was the last, uh, second to last uh, show that we actually did this year. Are you guys still, are you still going? Um, for, to be continued. To be continued. Say that. To so be continued. Are, let's say a hiatus at the moment. A, a hiatus at the moment, yeah. Um, lots of other things are coming up. And, you know, I got some other things that I'm working on with you guys. And yeah, of course. that's kind of where the focus is at right now. So it's I like to just give the disclaimer. <laughs> I give a disclaimer. The views expressed on this show are not that of the network. They are those of J1, aka Jamel Verse himself. I always felt if I gave that disclaimer, you know, just at the bottom of the thing, it just says disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. I think we should add that in these videos to disclaimer. These people are intoxicated. Yeah. So whatever they say, do not listen to the narrative because <laughs> the things they may say may be blown out of proportion. This beer, though. This beer is fucking good. This beer is fire. Let's um, finish the beer and move on to yeah, the next let's one. Do it. All right, so we are in beer number two. Uh, two. First beer was good, so we don't know what this beer is. Uh, so let's give it a try. It looks good. It looks good. It looks like Tropicana. It smells pretty good. I don't. I it don't smells know. like the beer number two is going to be the point when you guys are like, the interview changed. <laughs> He doesn't drink. He, he doesn't drink at all. At all. His wife well, not, proclaimed he's at all, not a drinker. I'm not a drinker. Like so, one beer, like that beer that we had, the first beer. We also drink a little beer. before the actual interview. And, you know. I've definitely had this beer before. Oh. You can feel it in your nostril. It's like. It's, <laughs> like you can feel it in your nostril. It it's, is. It's, 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 it's a sour. It's, yeah, it's a, it's it's a sour. Feel like a, I almost want to say like a grapefruit beer almost. It's definitely a sour, cause it, yeah, it's sour. It's good in a different sense. It's like sour and tart at the very end, like a it's sweet not, tart. It's not good, but it's not bad. I wouldn't personally like go and buy a six pack of these and sit here and drink these like casually. But I would like if if I bought this beer at a bar, I would drink the whole thing. It's kind of fruity too. So besides that tart taste. It's got like, I feel like a little fruity aftertaste on my palate. On my palate. A little bit, yeah, it really does. All righty, so second beer in. So let's go for the, I'm actually gonna hold this. I wanna keep drinking it. Me too. It's good. So. It's tart. <laughs> it's, it's like a sweet tart. <laughs> It's like a sweet tart beer. <laughs> it's a sweet tart beer. That's what I was saying. It tastes like a sweet tart. It does. So you are, so from what I know is you're a rapper too. Not like you don't put shit out very often. No, it's okay. Or so at it's... all. But from our interview that we did with Flo, you were you were a proficient rapper actually, and we even heard you rap, and you're pretty good at okay, it. So... And you, even, you even run a crew. Like you used to be in like a crew, like yeah. an actual rap group. Yeah. And you even you even rapped in high school. And yeah. So like, yeah. how did you get? Like, are you still rapping? Are you still into that? Like, I rap in the shower, <laughs> and then I rap at Christmas time. <laughs> what do you mean you rap like I rap presents <laughs> Christmas time. 
No. No, that's such a bad thing. You're like, I was like, does he rap Merry Christmas? I mean, you fell for it, right? I really did. <laughs> no. So, uh, <laughs> I, um, interesting story. So, like, everything that, like, I've gotten into, uh, as far as, like, the local scene here is music, rapping, all that, it all, like, just flows together. So, um, flows together and we, you know, flows. But, um, oh. <laughs> We, uh, it just came from, again, the radio show. So I would always have up and coming artists, dope artists on. And um, my buddy put me on to these guys called uh, Desert Life Entertainment. At the time there was five members. So I had them come on the show and uh, the interview went really smooth. And I kind of saw something in these guys. Like it was different. Um, it was a collective of guys, black, white, uh, Mexican, and they all were really dope and they weren't like your cliche rappers they weren't rapping about pills or you know popping pills and robbing banks and shit like that they all had a really cool message but they also had you know some of the dumb shit too but um I so they were they, kind of well-rounded yeah they were well in the sense of their music and also diverse in the sense of yeah. where they came from each as an individual yeah, and i thought that was super cool so, yeah um, <clears throat> i kind of kind of started to bond with the guys after this after the radio interview, um, I went to a couple of their shows that they had going on. I've had, I had them back on the show. And then one of the founders, uh, Rob Bleasy. What's up, Rob? I know you're going to watch this because you're going to be Rob, like, you better have yeah. mentioned it. Um, he had a post one day and he was just talking about, geez, man, we should add a couple more members to the crew. And I was just like, again, here I go. <laughs> Shit, you know what would be dope? <laughs> If you guys had a radio personality in your fucking crew, and he messages me back, and he's like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it'd be fucking dope. How many crew can say they got their own fucking radio guy, and whenever you guys drop a project, guess where you're going to come? And uh, so they started talking, and like, you know what, dude, we think that'd be a fucking dope-ass idea. So uh, we had him come back on the radio show, and uh, we're just doing a normal interview with him. I think they were getting ready to open up for uh, Rick Ross. So uh, we're doing the interview and I was like, so you guys got a special announcement, right? And they're like, as a matter of fact, yeah, we do. We want to introduce the newest member to Desert Life Entertainment. And then it was me. So it was. <laughs> so once yeah. again, you jokingly joked jokingly. about getting into something and you end up in it. Yeah. You know, I think that's how your life works. You're just like, hey, like. I wish. <laughs> I mean, well, it's two for two now. It was, yeah, it was it was two for two, man. And, um, you just said you're like, hey, man, cool. you need me, and then like, yeah, actually, we kind of do, and you're like, all right, I'm there. You know what? It, it really worked for a long time. I mean, and it, it still would work today if if we were active as a group. But um, it was really cool. I came in as a role of like, if there was a hook, I get on maybe a hook with some of the guys. Rarely. But more, it was like the business aspect, like getting these guys booked on shows, uh, trying to push deadlines as far as albums, uh, managing, all right, you're up next, you're up next, you're up next, as far as who's dropping projects, and really like just building that camaraderie amongst the crew and just trying to push them to do more. So I had like a manager role type. Yeah, so you're, you're yeah. yeah, you're basically the manager at that point. Yeah, you're just you know, doing, you were, you're part of it, but you're also kind of yeah. in the back ends of the actual yep. industry too, because like whenever, there's so much that goes around. Yeah, and then that. whenever they had shows or album release, I would host it. Oh, I'd be the host, so you know I get up there, you know, tell a couple little jokes, get the crowd hype or whatever, and was really like the hype man manager of the crew. There's one song out though that you can find a uh, "Sky's the Limit." It's on our Desert Life Entertainment. Of uh, "Sky's we the are, Limit." Sky's the Limit. We are DLE. Available on all platforms. Check you can catch out, me on check song J1 number out. 12. You can catch me on Sky's the Limit. Check um, out J1 on Sky's the Limit. Yeah. <laughs> you will. You'll but it, it was mind. some of the coolest times, man. Just um, working with these guys and going to all different types of shows and just really being able to not only be like part of their journey, but able to help them tell other people about their journey by having them on my radio show as many times as I want. That's really dope, honestly. Yeah. And also, um, besides rapping, you, you did rapping, but you also did a, um, you would host weed conventions. Yeah. You started doing that as well. So you, Interesting. So you another. would host, you did your radio show. Mm -hmm. You did 
you did your rap career basically, but you're also the manager of it, and you also did hosting of actual weed conventions as well. You yeah. kind of have your your toes dipped in a lot so of things. So, so not so much of hosting of uh, the weed shows. I was the let's call it the lazy on between the venue and the guy who started this private sector. Um, so it's basically more of a setup then, if anything. Yeah, more of a setup, but then it, it kind of developed into eventually. I you know I threw some of my own, a couple, one or two of my own on the side. But again, it just came from, I like to call it my bubbly personality. <laughs> um, I smoke a lot of weed. Um, I met this guy, there was this liquor store next to my house. I used to live on 36th Street in Thomas. And there was a liquor store that I would go to maybe two, three times a day, buying blunts, just go get blunts. And I happen to come back and me and the guy are talking and he ends up owning a club. He ends up owning a club and uh, he owned a club called Cloud Nine. I don't know if you guys ever been to Cloud Nine. Yeah, I've heard of it. I've heard of yeah, it. Yeah, he owned he was one of the owners of Cloud Nine and um he's like, hey man, if you you ever want to do any shows here or anything, like it's at your disposal. We'll sit down, we'll talk about what I'll get out of it, and this is what you can do. And um I started a series of shows like uh Desert Life Entertainment presents uh, uh, what was one of them? Um, something, who wants the smoke volume one? And there was like five different shows we did there. I can't think of the names right now. Yeah. But they, you know, they turned out being pretty cool. And then I met this guy, um, who was doing private weed shows, who was getting taxed like $5,000 to rent out a venue, like 2000 square foot venues. And he needed something bigger. And I was like, well, I got this venue that I got access to. I can fucking hook you up and you're spending $5,000 right now. That's a good amount too. That's a good I can, amount. You know, get you hooked up for a venue that's almost 10,000 square feet or maybe I think what was it like 8,000 square feet or Yeah, something. roughly around there. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, cool. So I, you know, I brokered the deal between them. I ended up getting screwed on the deal a little bit. Every week I got screwed on the deal. But, it happens. You know, it happens. But I really... I really didn't care too much because I got to go to the event. I got to meet a lot of people, rub some elbows, score a lot of fucking weed for cheap. And then, you know, it just gave me the idea like, hey, I can do this on my fucking own. So it was a good, you might have got screwed on the money aspect in a way, yeah. but you also got that networking like, yeah. basically that happened there. And it, and it kind of tied in at the time of through the radio station, we started um, one of my buddy Jose. He's back and forth from here to LA, to Milwaukee, all over. He works with a lot of different artists. T.I., Killer Priest, Trey the Truth, um, Corrupt, Daz, and he met Dr. Zodiac. I don't know if you guys heard of Dr. Zodiac's Moon Rocks. So uh, he met him and turns around. They're like, hey, man, we need, we're moving to Arizona. We need people to push our product. We need sales reps. We need manufacturers. What's up? So it kind of just tied into me doing the private sector events. I got hooked up with Dr. Zodiac, started selling moon rocks to the dispensaries. Um, I happened to be the first person that got moon rocks in a dispensary in Arizona. The first dispensary in Arizona was Emerald and Gilbert that had moon rocks. And that only happened because I made that deal happen. J1 made that happen. I made that happen. If you smoke moon rocks, I it's smoke... because of this man. It's this man. Yeah, in Arizona, that. if you smoke moon rocks in 2019, if you smoke it moon was rocks because in 2019, J1 is the guy that made that happen. Well, let's finish our second beer yeah. and let's get on to the third one. <laughs> Anyways, so we're on beer number three. Um, once again, I don't know what this is. It's a lot darker than our last beers. Oh, yeah, this one. I, uh, I was meant to smell it, but so went on my nose. <laughs> I was meant to smell it. Ow, it burned. <laughs> it's like I snorted it. So, we do, we actually work on another show together yeah. called The Post Up. Yes. And, um, which we interview artists as well. Um, they're not just artists, they're entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. politicians. Um, basically all rounded of people from Phoenix or Arizona in general. Yeah. And um, that's how I actually had met you was you came to us as a production to kind of get going and wanted to start this passion project you have. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been working on it and I've been enjoying it. And I think that is such a cool idea that what you have in mind, what made you want to do this idea? What made you like come up with this idea? Man. And you're like, I really want to do this is like kind of your passion baby, like in the sense of like, 
because obviously like we talked about you do your radio mm -hmm. you do some rapping like what made you want to start up the show the post up um getting back to the roots of <clears throat> why i wanted to uh get into radio in the beginning to just to begin with um i know we talked a little bit off camera about <clears throat> why i'm not really doing this show right now yeah um but for those very reasons that I'm not really doing this show right now are the exact reasons that I wanted to do something like the post up. Um, I wanted to have a fresh start at something and I wanted to work with some people that I knew wanted to do something creative. And uh, also just to bring awareness of what's going on locally because um, there's a lot of talent. Like the, uh, like, our, like the promo says, man, when you think of Arizona, you don't think of anything but the suns, the sports team, the desert, the heat, and cactus. That's all you think about. <clears throat> when you're in like a big city, you go to a big city thinking, you know what? I wanna get out. I wanna see what the city has to offer. I know there's an art district. I know there's some musicians. I know there's uh, restaurants that I really wanna see that are specific to this state that I'm visiting right now. And when you come to Arizona, that's not the first thing on your mind, but that's exactly what Arizona has to offer. They have culture, we have food, we have diversity, we have entrepreneurs. I mean, Arizona is a melting pot. So you'd have to be really ignorant to think that in a melting pot like Arizona that you're not gonna find talent. Yeah, of course. So many different aspects of, of life. And um, I think the post up was a great idea to, to showcase that what Arizona has to offer. There's people that are operating out of Arizona, whether they're a chef, <clears throat> whether they're a musician, whether they're a, a gymnast that are really doing something outside of just being locally. And a lot of the times those people have a story outside of that to that relates to the community. And uh, I really wanted to exploit that, so to say, to really bring it to uh, to the front. And uh, what you shed me, some light on it, basically. To, yeah, to shed some light on it and just kind of give them some awareness. and. Um, what made me reach out to you guys is I remember at one point when I left the radio station, me and a couple buddies, Flo's, and then uh, another guy, Serge, we had uh, another spot that I was doing the show out of. And um, we had just abundance of, of slots that we could do things with. And uh, Carlos really wanted to get into doing some type of podcast type of thing. And I remember always talking like, yo, I got you, bro. I got you, man. Don't worry. I got you. And um, things happened and the pandemic happened and just, we never got around to it. And when I started having this idea, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to fucking Carlos. I remember he was doing stuff with uh, Stand Up Live as far as, you know, that promo video. It was out and I was like, I wanna throw this idea out there and, you know, see if these guys are down with it and we can just kind of build from there. And thank God you guys were like, you know what, that's dope. That's something we wanna do. And um. I just I just found it as an opportunity to really do something cool and just show a different aspect of what's going on in Arizona and not only a different aspect of what's going on in Arizona, but a different aspect of myself. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, drink most of the rest of the beer. No, but yeah, the post up definitely you guys should stay tuned. Uh, Small World Production has a lot of really cool things hey. in the works. <laughs> and so beers with peers, the post up 21. Uh, it's not really the post up 21. It's the post up. I gave you guys the email address. Uh, the post up 21 at gmail.com. If you guys have a business, if you make music, if you're a politician, if you do anything in Arizona, message that email, let us know, and we'll come post up with you. Yeah, we'll check you out. Yeah, on um, the post up, definitely. And it's such a great, like I said, such a great idea mm -hmm. to do that with people. We have a lot of big things coming, and you guys will see it as um, we grow as a production company, but also as just in general, this entity. And you gotta see all these amazing people and what they're doing mm -hmm. and what they're doing locally and like how you can be part of that scene. And like, if you're an artist or like he said, a cook or whatever you're doing and you just want to be out there, you know, you can do it. Like mm -hmm. it's such a great thing. Like, even if you get like, 
even if it's such a slow start and you're still grinding, it's such a great thing yeah. to do. And that's what we're doing. We're just that's a slow just grind. grind. And that's what it's all about, though. That's what it's you, all this about. This is it, though. This show, Beers with Peers. Hey! Beers with fucking Beers. Beers with Peers. Is the <laughs> shit. Because you can have a normal interview with somebody and you're going to get some cookie cutter answers. You're going to get what they <laughs> want you to hear. But you put some beer in the mix, you're going to get their truth. You're going to get the real. You're gonna get the real deal. You're gonna get the entertainment. So that's the whole point. Is the shit. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next coming episodes. Um, but anyways, let's um kind of finish the rest of this beer because I gotta pee. <laughs> I gotta pee too. I think we all gotta pee. So let's finish this. Let's do it. You, yeah, this beer is good. Oh, man. that beer is tasty. So we were done with our last beer, of course, and that wraps up the end of our interview. Um, it was great having you on this. It was a blast being I'm here. I'm so glad we got to do this. Um, stay tuned for our next episode of Beers with Peers. Um, oh, and check out J1 and anything with the post up, with his music, his radio show. Um, you'll be able to get that information from him. We'll link that all that stuff in the description. Um, but if anything else, um, check out us at Beers of Peers again. Thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you next time. Cheers.